As the Open returns to St Andrews for the first time since 2010, Louis Oosthuizen, the champion that year, shares his memories of the week. It's always a buzz going back there at the Open. It's at St Andrews, that's where everything started. It's completely different to any other Lynx golf course you play. You have a lot of Lynx golf courses where you have very high fescue rough and, and just um, a lot of obstacles. St Andrews, you don't really have that. It's, it's um, more the, the, the bunkers um, and the conditions you get there, the bad wind, the rain, the weather, you got massive greens to eat too. So if you eat it well the week, you're gonna have loads of birdie opportunities, but um, you gotta eat it really well to have short ones. So you're gonna end up having a few really long putts. Oosthuizen had played the old course several times in the European Tour's Alfred Dunhill Lynx Championship and prior to that as well. I played it as amateur first time and, um, you know, went in so many bunkers um, and that's the last thing you want to do. I, th I think the toughest thing there is knowing where the bunkers are um, when you get on the tee and um, avoiding them. Louis had struggled in the majors up to that point, but true to his word, he did avoid the bunkers in round one, en route to a seven under par 65. My game felt really good. I just, I knew uh, it, I needed that one round to just get me going. And, um, you know, it was the first round at St Andrews. I, um, I hit it well and I made putts, and I always putt well at St Andrews. I see the lines good. Um, I feel like I can hit the putts. I can get some good speed on it. So. It's always a place I, I enjoy going back to. The dry, fine weather, which led to such low scoring on Thursday, gave way to much more challenging conditions for Friday's second round. The golf course changes completely with the weather. I mean, if you play St Andrews with, with uh, heavy rain and a lot of wind, it, it makes it completely different to playing it on a nice day. On a nice day, I feel like you can shoot a really low number but everything changes when the weather comes in there. I grew up right next to the coast, so I'm used to playing in windy conditions. You know, so used to the knockdown little shots, and on links, that's what you gotta do the whole way around, and I like that type of golf. It's a lot of shot making. Crucial to his success was a trigger to concentrate, recommended by a sports psychologist. After the French Open, you know, I spoke to my manager, uh, Chavi Chana, and said, I need to do something. I struggle to get in the moment before I want to hit the shot. I'm, my head's all over the place. I'm not thinking properly. and So it's a routine thing. I need to work on a routine. I saw um, Carl Morris and he helped me with a little red dot on my glove. Before every shot, just look down. It could have been anything. It didn't need to be a red dot, but, but just knowing when to um, start my routine to, to know what I want to do, think of what I want to do and hit the shot. It helped me keep things in perspective, not trying to get um, too far ahead of myself when I was playing. The South African had built up a formidable lead come Saturday night, four clear of Paul Casey and five ahead of the rest of the chasing pack. I wanted to give myself birdie opportunities. I, I still felt like if I can go out and, and make a few birdies early on, you know, I can shoot a good round. Um, I think key with a big lead is is to not really worry what the other guys are doing. Keep focus on what you want to do. Uh, get a number maybe on your head that you focus on. Try and get to two, three under maybe on the turn and, and don't play defensive at any time. You know, you, you've got to play your shots because it can easily around that golf course. If you had one or two bad tee shots, fan bunkers, you can, a five shot lead can change um, in two or three holes. The fifth hole, on the Sunday, I didn't need a good second shot. I sort of hit this lowy, hooky three wood left of the green and, and walked up to it and I saw the guy standing and it was really thickish grass. And, and you know, I thought this is all where I got to be careful now of, of making a bogey because it's a par five, Paul's probably going to make a birdie. I had 30 yards to the front and ended up having 90 something to the pin. And I hit the shot out the, out the thickish grass that released and ran and you know it probably took forever to get there but I had a pretty good one to 20 or 25 feet. I missed the putt but um, there was a key moment I felt just to not get myself too far um, or let Paul get close to me. 
Then I hit that tee shot on nine. I had to make birdie there. If Paul was already on the green, he was going to two putt. I needed to make birdie to not to get him within two shots. And then I made the eagle putt. Um, I didn't expect to make it, and uh, you know it was it wasn't a tough putt. It was pretty straight, uh, but it was a long putt. And um, I made the eagle, and he ended up making a six or seven footer for birdie. Then nearly made another birdie putt on ten. Made a good par putt on eleven, and then the twelve all changed everything. It was a tough tee shot on any day. Twelve. Um, it's a hole where I take driver. It, um, any other club brings the bunkers into play for me. I try and get it as close as possible to the green. And I had a good shot, did a great second little pitch and, and made the birdie. And unfortunately, you know, the ball hit in the left and, and made that triple, which, uh, which changed the game for me completely. After my tee shot on 18, I sort of took everything in. I had a nice walk with my caddy and looked at everyone and saw all the South African flags and, you know, people out there. And, and then you sort of take it in, you know, um, I didn't even read that first putt. I just butted up to somewhere on the right there and just finish off to, to get off the green and then just get hold of the trophy. And how did it feel to achieve what most golfers can only dream of? Oh, it's, it's sweet. <laughs> it's, a, it's a really good, um, you know, it's something you dreamed of, you thought of one day having in your hands and um, I think it's everything and more what you what you dreamt of. Having South Africans before me, Gary Player, Ernie, um, Bobby Locke, it's just a trophy that you really wanted your name on and yeah it's, it's just a great thing to I think to say that you've you've won the Open.